semi-submersible unit and a spar. Well, the concept has been around for a few years, but when ATP went to Gulf Marine Fabricators and Bennett Associates, this particular hull was not on paper yet. And to go from where we are today to where the hull is designed, drafted, get the all the equipment procured, built, assembled, installed, and to be producing oil in less than four years is really an amazing, amazing thing. Well, we're right at the tail end of the, of the project and the countdown to First Oil. We've been working on hookup and commissioning activities out here, dot I's and crossing T's. So uh, we've crossed a number of significant milestones here in the last uh, few weeks. And uh, with any luck, we'll be ready to open this thing up for production next week. I think people will be surprised to find out how much high tech and hard work comes together out in the oil field. For instance, besides just the fact that we have large cranes lifting things into place, we also have a lot of computer programs and software that this, the operation of this entire vessel depends on. And that runs from everything from controlling the temperature in the water in the living quarters all the way to how well we're adjusting levels in our production vessels in order to maximize the efficiency of the separation process. Telemark became a substitute back. The control systems are on the tree itself, and they are being controlled by a MAC system, that's what we call it. That is the umbilical system, electrical signals to the computer <coughs> on the well, and that dictates which valve to open and close. All management is done over here in the control room, and it's only one screen that is required for telemark. The rest of the screens that you see over here are for the rest of the process of the facility and the well star being put in over here. This is the 4.25 megawatt solar turbine that feeds main power to this platform. That would be enough at the average uh, U.S. home consumption to power uh, a little over 3,300 3, homes. We've got a lot of big loads here. We've got three large pipeline pumps uh, running directly off this 4160. We've got a lot of process that has to be done before the product can be moved back to shore. Uh, in addition, uh, there's all the utilities that you need on an onshore platform from the quarters building where everyone sleeps uh, to provide uh, water, uh, instrument air, and a number, of, a number of other utilities that keep the platform running.
is a bunch of pretty equipment. This is Coast Guard approval today. That's going to turn that into multi billion dollar stream of revenue.
61 million barrels with a PV10, a present value and with a 10% discount of approximately 410 million in 2001 to reserves of 212 million barrels of energy with a PV10 value of 5.6 billion today, we are accorded a nearly identical share price value which we enjoyed when we went public in 2001. Something is not right about that picture. We are at the mercy of and subject to the work product of Wall Street analysts as well. Recently a J.P. Morgan analyst downgraded ATP with a statement that we would not survive without a half billion dollar infusion supported by his absolutely baffling model of our financial status. For two days, while our stock was battered, my CFO and I tried repeatedly and unsuccessfully to contact the analyst. And ATP during the span of time was avalanche with telephone calls and emails from shareholders, bondholders, partners, vendors, and the media. After the analyst resurfaced from the conference he was attending, he acknowledged that he had made a $450 million error in his calculations. <laughs> By double counting, $450 million of capital costs of our $500 million market cap company. <laughs> he politely issued a retraction of his error, but did not change his downgrade, which certainly did not help our company during a challenging time when we are still being punished for the BP oil spill. There are many other challenges that ATP has tenaciously conquered. We took the worst pounding hurricanes, Aaron, Opal, George, Allison, Isidore, Lily, Francis, Ivan, Dennis, <laughs> Katrina, Rita, Humberto, and Ike could dish out. And we survived all of them with minimal damage to handrails, Helidex skirts and certain facilities, because of the care and the safety we employ in meeting or exceeding all regulatory standards for construction. We also met the challenges of Enron criminality and WorldCom bankruptcy and the resulting implementation of Sarbanes-Oxley which has added annually greater than a million dollars of regulatory compliance costs without a corresponding benefit. As CEO, I didn't need a regulation to direct me to be accountable for the accuracy and integrity of our filings. ATP prepared its financial statements honestly and ethically before and continues to prepare our statements honestly and ethically after the imposition and costs of Sarbanes-Oxley. To the capital constraint challenge brought on by the credit market meltdown and the Wall Street financial collapse, ATP had to become exceedingly creative in its financing. When Wall Street collapsed, ATP had two $650 million deep water platforms under construction, one in China and one in the United States. We first came up with the concept of selling both volume denominated and dollar denominated overrides in our producing properties to financial groups. 